Awesome. Well, hello everybody. This is Chini Maji Podcast, and um, this week we are super excited and privileged to host to go in a different direction slightly. Um, traditionally, we've obviously done more. Uh, entrepreneurs, but there's always been this uh, need to actually have a different perspective. So today we have somebody from the professional side of things. Um, we have Esther Waititu, who is with Standard Chartered. Am Stan I Bink. Stan Bink. <laughs> right. I used to work there, so no, now it's Stan Bink Bank. Awesome. And mm-hmm. Esther is um, a banker, but on the corporate financial mm-hmm. instruments side of things. Mm-hmm. So let, tell us what that is, right? Okay. Tell us what we introduce yourself and just kind of go from there. Okay, great. So I'm Esther White I've been in banking for sadly 20 years or excitingly 20 years. <laughs> um, and so I've worked in, in several banks. So there's, there's, don't feel bad that you mixed up the I banks. I mix them up. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Um, but what I do and what I've done most of my banking career is I have done operations within the banking world. I have done relationship management, which is the you know being the face of the bank with customers. So more retail um, or how? how no, you know? mostly mostly has been corporate. My operations experience was pretty much retail. Okay. Um, but then when I started moving into the hard stuff, which is the analysis. Um, product development, I focus largely on large corporates, medium to large corporates. Mm. Um, so yeah, that, that has been a journey. So if I could summarize my career, the 20 years I've been in banking, I'd like to just say that I like to solve mysteries around money. Because at the end of the day, what, what we do is we identify a challenge around financing and we provide a suitable solution. Mm. Right. Um, so those are some of the things that I've done. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm working with the bank to develop strategies for customers and people in the bank. So it's a nice in mix. the bank in the bank. So externally, um, understanding what the trends are and trying to see what solutions we can synth- um, provide to the banks. Mm. We're also going through a journey where we are moving away from being product oriented. So I'm sure you've met bankers who say, or people in insurance, who say, "I've got a perfect insurance product for you." Mm-hmm. And they'll give you all sorts of names and you have really no clue. All mm-hmm. you want to do is to get my money into um, an interest-bearing account that will generate some income. When I need to access it, I have access. So moving away from saying that these are the products that we have, but moving into a space where we listen and then mm-hmm. provide a solution. Very interesting. Yeah. You know, I mean, the banking industry, especially in, in, in Africa, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys have had a long, fruitful kind of lifespan, right? Without being forced to evolve, yeah. right? And you've been there for 20 years. I guess, really quickly, if you could sum it up, how, how, many, how much of change have you seen mm-hmm. uh, in that 20 years? Are we seeing more recent, mm-hmm. you know, kind of catalyzation of change? Has it been consistent in the level of, you know, change over that mm-hmm. 20 years? What, what's the kind of so trajectory in yeah, terms of like evolution s- for banking? Yeah. So I'd like to say, because I've been in banking from the early, uh, from say about 2000, that's Mm. when I started um, off in banking. And at that time, I think bankers were the ones who led the decision making. We were the ones who told customers what they had to do and how they had to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, But very slowly, as we, you know, customers started having their voice, people started having more access to information, people Mm. started becoming very clear around what they wanted and how they wanted it. I'd like to say that it's actually accelerated. Customer driven. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really customer driven. And, and let me ask you this. I mean, it's not like, so you, what was the inflection point? Uh, was mm-hmm. it access to the web or was it, uh, what's that bank called that started? Equity. Was it equity? Mm, equity. Was it a, a yeah. confluence of events that started saying, hey, we need to kind of really evolve here and start mm-hmm. listening because we're losing market share and that mm-hmm. type of thing. Yeah. Can you characterize what, what some of the... Yeah, so some of the things were, um, so obviously our customers became more savvy. So the internet played a very big part, right? Okay. Um, when I started off, we were on the cusp in Kenya at that time, starting off internet banking. And so that meant I could access my money anytime, anywhere. Mm. Whereas before, I literally had to find a branch. So the big mm-hmm. thing at that time in the, early, in the late 90s, early 2000s was your relationship was based in a branch right. with right. a branch manager, manager yeah. right? Yeah. Um, um, he was almost like a chief, right? Yeah, he was an important person. <laughs> very important person. And yeah. also 
uh, created a different culture. We had people who would come into the bank just to have a chat. Right. You know, I had some customers who would say, okay, I've just come in to check my balance. And while I'm at it, what's going on? What did you hear? You know, you offer them a cup of tea. Yeah, yeah, so it became yeah. a, social, a social thing. Right. But that's with the older set of customers. Mm -hmm. um, what we started to see is that people now started becoming more and more impatient. Mm -hmm. So I don't have time have, to chat with you. I, I don't have. To, I just, just give me my balance. <laughs> okay, now you know we've got this little um, online uh, portal. You can go on. You can check. And and customers started saying, "Yeah, I need that because I don't have time." Right. Living in this city, you know how traffic can become, right? Yeah. And I started off in industrial area. Right. So just getting to the branch started becoming more and more challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, the account owners stopped coming into the branches. You'd find it's the people that they send, the messengers, the couriers who okay. are coming in. Right. Yeah. And and so you started to say, I'm losing touch. And if I wanted yeah, yeah, to see yeah. a customer, I had to go to his premises. So how do I make that easy and accessible? Wow. So Where the world was just shifting yeah. from underneath. It starts to shift because you realize... The guy's not coming into the bank anymore. I'm the one going to look for them. And you're and looking for them. One person. Right. Yeah. And, and you're looking for them to sell them stuff? Or why, why, why do you need to talk to them? What's the deal? Why you need to talk to them is one, you need to understand what's evolving in their business. Okay. What can you do differently? Because right. the things you did yesterday may still not be relevant. Right. And then if you start seeing your business flow is, is dropping, there's something else something happening. Wrong, yeah. 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 I mean, that's dangerous, right? Yeah. I mean, because it's a signal that. Yes, um, so we needed to start spending more and more time with our customers and it meant that we had to develop tools because there's no way you can employ so many people yeah, to talk. Yeah, you can't yeah. have a one, custo one customer to, um, to one bank staff member. Mm. So we had to start thinking of innovative ways in which we can connect mm. with our customers. Mm -hmm. And that's why you know, the big buzzword now, which I think has been happening for a long time, I just think it's been accelerated, is around digitization. Mm, that's a big one for banks, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a very, very big thing. Where do you think, where do you think that is from an evolution standpoint? I, not that maybe you don't have any benchmarks in terms of what is... I mean, because at the end of the day, uh, my experience with banking here has been, it's still very difficult to even just, I got to download this app and go do this thing and do that. It's, it's very difficult to actually get to the digitization solution, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't even have a mobile app for my current bank okay because it's just so i gotta go fill this form so by the time i get to the actual digitization i've been through hell Oops. of a manual process yeah. right <laughs> so you're still going to send a guy to the bank okay <laughs> right no, so i think i think we're really trying to get there i think the challenge is um as you'll appreciate banking needs a lot of security yeah, banking yeah, yeah, is obviously yeah. highly governed um and and because of some of those challenges as a customer you may feel that the digitization process has been rather slow. slow. Yeah. Um, but internally for, for the banks, there's a lot of work that has been done to say, how do we ensure that the person who's signing on and accessing accounts is the person KYC. who owns the right. account, right? Yeah. And so KYC has become a big thing. Even to add a signatory, we want to know where you live, we want to know what your pin is. Um, and, and all of this is regulation. All mm. of this is just mm. being compliant, right? Okay. Um, so there's also that aspect that sometimes can slow, um, can slow it down. I think the other piece is that, you know, banks are all different and everyone has a different strategy. Mm. So in terms of who you decide to partner with on this digitization path becomes really critical. Mm -hmm. If you choose the wrong partner mm. in that process, <laughs> then your phones, then the thing glitches, then you're not able to download stuff. Right. So there's a lot of work that banks have to do or have done to make sure they're choosing the right partners. So you guys are so just when talking you hold, about... So when you're saying partners, you're saying from the bankers. From a, from banking, from a banking perspective. I'm the technology right, platform. The technology platform. Which is service the Service right provider. Yeah. Who yeah. are the service okay. providers? Okay. Um, uh, are their systems, you know easily accessible, mm -hmm. you know, can we um, integrate our back-end system? So the thing that is not transparent to customers is that the back-end to deliver the services we give to you to make sure your money is safe, to make sure we're compliant, is a massive investment. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we probably have a different core banking system that sits with all the data and all the information, and that is secure and only for us. These are the add-ons that allow you to access your money when, and, um, when you want to at any one point in time are normally provided by other people mm -hmm. who don't have access to your core. How do we get that integrated? integrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not a simple uh, problem, no. for no, sure. No, no, yeah. it's not a Look, it's a very complex problem. And if we just move slightly away from, from banking, that's also what's hurt our retail industry in this country. Okay. Um, if you look at the example, say, of Nakumat, yeah? 
this the ability to do the reconciliation between the stock that they have and what they have sold started to create a financial issue. So that's why banks may appear to be a little bit slower, but they're just trying to do it right because mm, it is a lot of work. Interesting. Well, I mean, one of the th- the way I think about this whole thing is like obviously banking evolved. Uh, as a solution to a social economic challenge, mm-hmm. right? And so, um, you know, innovation in terms of social innovation and technology innovation and this mm-hmm. whole thing, I mean, it's just one big I, yeah. I for innovation, mm-hmm. is, you, you know, n- always questioning, you know, are we structured in the right way at, at the highest level? I mean, I'm mm-hmm. talking about banking as, yeah, a, as an industry. a big B, right? Mm-hmm. And then you've got crypto now coming into the mm. conversation and then bankers mm. what, what does this work what does this mean to me this is very interesting and exciting because it starts to actually you know kick over sacred cows that we would not even before had a way of thinking about how we would move them right, right. So it's, a, it's a very interesting kind of what, what, is, what are your thoughts on that you know so uh, cryptocurrencies bitcoin all this great stuff i think my view is it's a response to a place where banks have not necessarily mm. been flexible so we talked about regulation before. We talked about technology, safe, you know, safekeeping uh, people's money. That's 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 really the big B. That's mm. what banking is all about. Mm-hmm. You give me your money, mm-hmm. I take care of your money, and I give it back to you, mm-hmm. right? Um, banking is also like the heartbeat of the economy. If banks are doing well, the economy inevitably is doing well because we don't have our own money to right. bank. Right? Exactly. It's other people's money that's It's other people's money, money that makes money, right? right. So that means there's, 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 there's flow of money. Right. So I think banking has its place. Mm. The ethos, the reason why banking was set up remains the same. That has not changed. Mm. However, what we're seeing is how people want to access and trade with their money is what is changing. So let's talk, let's let's. So let's that's talk. where cryptocurrencies and, and everything else comes. So so let's let's look at that a little bit more. So you say mm-hmm. it is about safekeeping mm-hmm. and that's safekeeping, much it. safeguarding. Yeah, really, that's what it is. Because a banking relationship is a trust relationship. Right. Remember in the beginning, I spoke about the guy who just comes to have a chat. Yeah. He's really just checking to see is the bank okay. So is so my the, balance fine? Right. So yeah. the bank represents trust, That's right? It. So blockchain is supposed to be a trust platform. Mm-hmm. And so if you can have actually digital trust, mm-hmm. then in essence, a bank doesn't need to exist in the classic sense. It does eventually. Right? And, and these, are, these are very abstract concepts that it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not, yeah it's not as, I'm I mean, with you. I'm with you. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where you're like, okay... Yeah, so we basically, in a sense, what this blockchain promises is, is, is it's, a, it's a trust platform. Yeah. So remember, blockchain, I'll give you my view. Yeah, this is yeah, Esther's yeah, view. Yeah. It's not a... <laughs> right. I'm just giving you my personal view. Mm. What blockchain has done is blockchain has been able to document every single transaction in a unique way. Mm-hmm. Right? We are able to document every transaction in banking, but we're able to do it manually. And the manually is that form you referred to to sign on on an app. The other manual way is, please sign me a physical check, so that if any day you come back, Mark, and you're like, hey, I didn't make this payment. I've got, no, here's the check you signed. Mm -hmm. This is your signature, you walked in, I could Mm -hmm. see you, right? Mm -hmm. So what blockchain is simply doing, it's taking that away and actually putting it on a platform Mm -hmm. that you can- Digitizing, mutable. Exactly. So basically, if if blockchain blockchain worked out, What we're saying is the bank doesn't need to exist, right? Or your claim becomes the bank because it, you can actually store value, mm-hmm. information, transactions, transfer. Like, of course, you have to build other layers mm-hmm. of, of other things. But the core mm-hmm. is trust, like what you're saying, it right? It remains trust, yeah. And the question becomes, can this thing deliver on the promised the promise of because bank bank is now an application, right? You build mm. on top of that. We've established trust, right? And right. then now we have all these other services, Correct. blah 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 blah. Mm. Um, I guess blockchain becomes that now there's this layer of trust, the mathematical model of how we can do that. Mm. Can we now build the applications, which is now Bitcoin and so on and so forth? Absolutely. So, so, so you can build all those applications. And I think with time, that's really what it's going to be. Um, but yeah. there's one critical thing that trust comes with. Mm. Trust comes with feelings. Trust comes with engagement. Mm. So it doesn't matter how much I spend time online and I can access my transactions. There's that human element that banking will always bring. 
Yeah. You know what? It, it is true. <laughs> I'm going to push back on this. Like, <laughs> the, do I really need to actually see my banker? Like, to be honest with you, like millennials, they're not, they're they swiping are, left and right. They, 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 don't, they don't need to see. They don't need to see a banker. Yeah, they yeah. don't need to see me, for yeah, sure. They don't yeah. need to see a banker. Yeah. However, mm. they need someone who understands how they think and what they need. And unfortunately, I don't think technology... Okay, so let's go to AI. Okay, right? now, we, now we... Let's okay. go to AI. Because I know that's AI. where you're going to go. So blockchain is, is fine. So blockchain mm. just says, I can store your data. Trust is... Um, trust, it trust. solves a trust problem. We're saying that's what the promise is. Yes. So, so let's assume saying, that's done. So I'm still saying that's done. And mm. that's still in the realm mm. of banking. And that's mm. why, you know, mm. um, banks are now using for trade finance. Mm. Like the Standard mm. Bank. They're mm. using blockchain to do that. Mm. Securing What were they doing before? Just to give a sense. Do you know? Um, so no, we, we're working off the normal um, technology Leisure. platforms. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that that we had. Mm. Um, so we had, we had obviously had, um, you know, good trade finance systems that support what we do. Mm. But blockchain is good in the sense that now it's um, it's putting together and storing our information in a way that we can easily transfer it from country to country mm -hmm. across the globe. Mm -hmm. So remember, so it's much more secure. Is that what uh, we're saying? It's a lot more secure. Okay. It's a lot from more banking convenient. Perspective. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we're happy. So okay. it becomes one of the tools that we use to continue allowing people to trade and to hold money and mm. for people to trust that the bank is taking care mm. of their financial mm. Um, mm. requests. AI is slightly different. Mm. AI now moves into the realm of all this data that I have. Exactly. Yeah. What is this data telling me? Exactly. Because in the customer, past, about, about my business, my cost, customer, about everything. banks have, you know, and sometimes I don't even think we take advantage of all the data that yeah, we have. We have a lot, of data. a lot of data. What, what we have struggled to do um, is to connect this data to make it relevant to, to mark as an individual. Yes, to, to improve your services, right? Exactly. To understand your customer exactly. better and all that. And so that's stuff. where yeah. AI starts Comes to, in, to work. Becomes us. interesting, yeah. I mean, you know, so for example, we, as you know, we, uh, one of our most recent podcasts, we hosted uh, um, Samir Raski, who's a founder yes, of, a, yes. of an AI company in, mm, in New York. Yes. And, and he's also <coughs> leading up your... Yeah, so actually school. we're partnering with them to, to bring uh, an, an AR micro degree, degree program here. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The idea is to actually unlock the talent, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's so much demand for uh, AI mm -hmm. engineers and people with those skill sets. Yes. Uh, apparently right now around the world, there's 250,000 AI job recs, right? Sure. Unfilled, right? Wow. So That's there's a significant cool. demand. So, <clears throat> so their, their biggest customer, that the, where they're getting the most pull mm -hmm. is from the banks in New York, right? Mm -hmm. And stories around like um, some of his colleagues, because he's a PhD in uh, AI, uh, mm -hmm. professor at Columbia. Some of his colleagues, right, in the same mm -hmm. field, were being offered seven-figure pay packets sure. to, wow. go, to go and join the bank and build their AI program. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we are very excited about. I mean, technology is amazing. Right? Mm -hmm. I always tell people like, ten years from now, we it's going to look very different. Yeah. And you and I are going right. to be a little bit obsolete, right? right. I'm, I'm, I'm right in the middle of it. <laughs> I'm looking to drive this thing. Right. I'm looking to actually reap the rewards yeah. of, of that whole transition. And I think all of us can, can benefit from yeah, it. Sure, because, yeah. um, you know, the, the thing about tech, what it does, or innovation, right, is it changes reality. Mm -hmm. it, al it alters reality in mm -hmm. a ways that people cannot even right now fathom foresee mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um what does that actually mean that could mean so many things mm -hmm. right i mean we've seen in pesa how it has changed mm -hmm. right the, the potential for all that but anyway we're kind of getting how do you even get here <laughs> so we got here because you said how we use ai um and i think the point that i'm starting that i'm really building on mm -hmm. um, mark here is that banking will always remain it'll never go away how we do banking is what is going to fundamentally shift so I think we've talked about how blockchain can help us to be more efficient mm -hmm. um, and enhance the trust that people um, are looking for in banking, right? But here's what I so, here's, Go ahead, go ahead, sorry. And then we're moving to AI to say, aside from building this nice, you know, big umbrella of trust, this information that we have on our customers to make it that better. we can make that we can use to make it better, mm. and that's where we have to leverage on AI. So, so here's here's so, how I think about this: mm. inefficiencies, right? So, at the end of the day, um, the way things have always been done, mm -hmm. we assume that that's kind of like, and we live with that, right? Yeah. M my thing is, you know, where there is inefficiency, or where there is kind of like uh, rent collecting, or where there's just when it's not serving customers, right? Mm -hmm. 
we need to actually and, and innovation is about that. Innovation is, is bridging the gap of inefficiency and right. you know, moving rent Making quality, things better. transparency, mm. all that other stuff, right? So I guess banking will always be there depending on how you define that, mm-hmm. right? But I just think that you know there's been a lot of inefficiency and opacity that has created this asymmetry where mm-hmm. bankers have been able to, you know, <laughs> live happy. fat and happy lives for okay. a very long time, right? Yeah. Um, and I guess for me, that's where we're like, look, let's make this more efficient. Mm-hmm. Let's make this serve customers better. Mm-hmm. Do we need branches? Maybe not, right? Like that type maybe of Maybe some, maybe not. Yeah, right. yeah, depending on who you're serving, right? Right. So that's where AI comes in. If I know what works for Mark, then I create a solution that's relevant for Mark. And there'll mm-hmm. be a bunch of Marks, right? right? And then there'll be a bunch of other guys who probably want to come in, you know. Is that still, let's talk about that. Do you, do you still see, how is that shifting, if, if at all? Okay, so it's shifting. So we're seeing a lot more transactions happening outside of the bank, right. banking halls, right. right? So we're seeing a lot more moving on to mobile. So a big percentage um, is moving on to mobile, a big mis- percentage is moving on to online. Mm-hmm. But if you look at the value of transactions, still, the value sits in a lot of the branch transactions because of the large corporates doing their mm-hmm. transactions. So that's mm-hmm. still sitting. Mm-hmm. But everything is actually moving. So consumer is moving off moving online. Off. They're moving online. They're moving online. Brick and mortar sure. is dying. And from brick and mortar is consumer bank. You know, it's it's tough. I mean, getting an approval to do a branch is becoming harder and harder because the question is, who is it really, really going to serve, right? right? And who approval from the from the government or from? Well, approval from from from, 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 my, from our shareholders. Like, yeah, I want yeah, to yeah, invest yeah. money. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And even when you go to the central bank, they'll ask you, okay, that's great. Let's let's talk about it a little bit more because we're seeing a bit of a pull and, and, and push coming, mm-hmm. you know, around digital mm-hmm. or using mobile versus. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we're having more debates, whereas in the past it was very easy. We're opening up a branch here, okay, fine. But now we're actually <laughs> right. asking ourselves, and I don't think it's just limited to where I work, but I think all the other bankers would right. support this. Right. We're actually having deeper conversations around, is this really relevant? Is there another way we can service a client that's cost efficient, that's convenient for all the customers? Right, so right. there's a no. So, so let me ask you this, and, and maybe we can pivot to <clears throat> just talk a little bit about more of the, the financing side of businesses with this. Um, you play this 10 years out, or how, what's the best way to ask this? Is there room for new entrants into this space, right? That are maybe purely digital, or is this a closed, you know, cartel scenario? No. Where other for the, the, the existing incumbents are not going to let you play? Well, um, I must say right now, there's a barrier for entry um, for entering into the into banking, the banking world. industry. Yeah? So it, there's a barrier. You need the capital you need, um, the regulations that require. So there is already a barrier, a natural right. barrier that right. comes in. Right. Um, when you look at the likes of M-Pesa, if you look at the likes of Tala, because you want to go into talking about financing, they have gotten in but through a different th- angle. Through a different angle and through one product. Right. Right? right. So they if, if you look at it from a product perspective, they the barriers are fewer. Right. Yeah? Because if I'm just going to be doing payments, you've got like <clears throat> world remit doing mm. cross border payments, mm-hmm. you've got all these different West Western <clears throat> Union, all these people doing payments. That's one of the things that banks do. It's not all that they do. Mm-hmm. But you're seeing people, it's easier for people to enter into the remittance world. Right, right. Um, you're, you're starting to see people who are saying, we're trade finance specialists, so if you're doing any trade finance transactions, we can, we can assist right. you. But banking does all of this under one umbrella, and that's where it becomes a bit prohibitive to, to actually enter. So they're the, the, um, the entry into specifically becoming a bank becomes quite high. Right. But if I choose a niche area a of smart, one yeah. of the products, then the barriers are very low. That's exciting. Yeah. I love that. Because, <laughs> so, you know, when you think about it that way, it's like, okay, fine. Don't storm the front door, no. right? No. Come adjacent, right? Yeah. Come at an angle. Come like, yeah, okay, that's not so interesting. But all of a sudden, you're actually having... You have a customer base. Absolutely. You have a business that's working. Yeah. Now you can expand. Mm-hmm. This is. And what you might not insight. see, and mm-hmm. what you might not see, even that small player coming into the market choosing one product, actually gives us as banks a tough time because we then have to look at our own processes and, and our and our offering and say, 
well, there's actually an easy way to do it. Right. It challenges you guys to exactly, actually get better. Exactly. And that's why it's great mm. that the barriers for entry for <clears throat> specific products within the banking world is quite low mm. because it also gives us a guide as to what's where, really happening. What's happening yeah. Because you guys are insular, we're, you're trying yeah, to kind of protect insular, your... And we're big. We're right. big. By the time you change, you know. But when you start seeing the small players outside. coming up with ideas... It becomes more of a collaborative effort. Like, oh my goodness, okay, we hadn't thought that we could do it in this way because we're caught up in just doing things the old way. When you say about collaborative effort, explain what you mean by that. I, I simply mean if I'm sitting in the bank and I want to increase um, payment, I want to make sure I capture all your payments, right? Mm-hmm. I want to make sure I capture all your mm-hmm. trade flows. Um, I'm going to work with the tools that I have mm-hmm. internally. I'm going to work with what I can see, right? We've got a techie guy who's worked in in the client's business understands what their problems are from their perspective not mm. from a banking perspective mm-hmm. but from a client perspective mm-hmm. um, and they start to create solutions this is why the likes of your world remit uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. why they exist right? that's why yeah. they exist right <clears throat> those give us ideas as to what we can do and mm. you'll see now banks are stopping to say that no you can't do payment services but instead we're saying oh my goodness western union world remit you guys have thought about this in a different way can we enter into some form of arrangement mm. where we can sort of partner off each other? So before there would be... Before I knew how to do it, I'm a banker. Remember we said we used mm. to make lots of money and mm. we're seen mm. as people who are very untouchable. Mm. But now we realize for us to survive and for we're us vulnerable. to serve yeah, you guys, yeah, yeah. we have to start with partnerships. So That's very interesting. In, so it's in an that, evolution in thinking? It's, an ev- it's a huge mind shift. It's a massive mind, mind shift. Um, when you start to see people like um, Kenya Commercial Bank saying, I'm going to partner with you, Safaricom, using M-Pesa and advanced loans, that's a collaboration. It could have been said the other way and we just say, no, only banks, we're only going to lend. But now we realize that they, there's an alternative way of serving customers that we can't really figure out. Right. Yeah? Right. Because if we would have, we didn't. You'd have done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's that's so what, that's what I'm saying. It's collaboration. So it's not, it doesn't start off as collaboration. It starts off innovation right? right it starts right. from i'm tired of having to walk, line up in the bank right. and wait for two days for my money right what i have to do is okay i found a, a simpler way yeah. and we're like looking at this guy and saying gosh it's that simple right, right. can right. i work with you right. can you give me another solution so that's how it becomes collaborative because we're, we're also looking and seeing and saying oh my guys are doing things differently how can we learn from them that's awesome um <clears throat> so one of the things that I see uh, is this kind of like, um, again, bifurcation between people like yourselves who are deeply industry experienced mm. and so on and so forth, and innovators who are mm-hmm. younger who mm-hmm. don't have that experience. Mm-hmm. So if you look at kind of like how you bridge the gap, and I know people are trying all kinds of different ways mm. to do it. One of my, my, our thesis is, okay, fine, what we do is we take young talent, mm-hmm. put them in an environment and pursue Mm. market opportunities and trying to solve problems right and we we say okay fine if we find traction if Mm -hmm. we find a solution that starts to work Mm -hmm. now at some point we will need that industry expertise and even as a process of actually getting to that solution Mm -hmm. you'll still need people who can tell you okay this is how things work on the inside Mm -hmm. so we partner with people like that and bring Mm -hmm. them in and so on and so forth but ultimately i see uh some of the companies that we will build will Mm -hmm. be led by in terms of being led to the next level, mm-hmm. will be led by people who are from industry mm-hmm. um, at the executive level, right? Like yeah. meaning, like for example, in an amazing scenario, two years from now, I recruit you mm-hmm. to be a CEO of one of our fintech plays, mm-hmm. yeah. and you take it to the next level because the people who actually built the product and so on and so forth, most of them are gonna be younger, mm. whatever, so yeah. they don't have that sophistication, experience, expertise. Mm. So I am really excited about the opportunity to marry up these two dynamics, right? Mm. One is that young, innovative, kind of like scrappy, we can do things, innovate, create mm. some traction, but at the right time, bring the right level of talent. That's right. Marry that up and take it to the next level. So can I just say what I think that is? Yeah. So I'm equally as excited uh, about that. When yeah. you're talking about it, I'm like, yes, that's where we need to be. Um, that for me is co-creation. 
mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because you have the people who have the knowledge. Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes when you have the knowledge, you might not have the know-how. Mm-hmm. And the know-how is what the millennials, the younger guys start to bring to say, mm-hmm. this is a new way of doing things. Mm-hmm. This is how we can make it easier. We know what the rules are. We know what the broad parameters are. We know what the principles are. We know who makes the decision. Exactly. Right? You guys are the next... Like, yeah. Brain trust so, that brings... So, so, so when you bring these two things together, when you bring the expertise in terms of making processes easier, in terms of connecting with people on the shop floor, on the shop floor I mean the guy on the street, right. with these executives who understand who makes a decision, what piece of legislation right. do we have right. to influence, totally. right? Where are we going to source the financing? Again, we talked about trust. Trust is not just about the bank, the institution, but trust is also about the individuals, right? right? Right. So when I look at a credit application, I'll say, who are the guys behind it? Is Mm. this a credit, someone who's trustworthy? Mm. So it moves beyond the organization and moves into the individuals. Mm. I don't know the millennial. Yeah, I don't know Mm -hmm. whether he's going to run away with my money. I don't know if he's going to bring it back. But I know, look at, I know Esther, I've worked with her for 20 years, and this is her track record. I can trust her. If she can manage the millennial, then everyone becomes comfortable. Mm. And if Esther believes in the ideas that this startup, this fintech, this millennial has, mm. then it's collaborative yeah. because then you become their advocate and vice versa. When, when we say to the millennial that we're going to support you in this, they know it's going to work. Right, right. So it's a very intricate but, you know... Fine cool, balance, yeah. but a beautiful kind of organic way of bringing our capabilities together. That's right. right. And it's yeah. human capital. At the end of the day. Absolutely. Right? And that's the biggest thing. So now that's the only thing technology doesn't have an upper hand on. On human capital. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, the way I think about it, it's not competitive. I think about it as it's, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, I, 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 having been in an in a innovation ecosystem mm-hmm. that has been doing its thing for 70 years mm-hmm. and has kind of developed this way of I guess, managing human capital and bringing it together for the right mm. situations and funding it and driving it and this mm. whole kind of very well-sequenced process. Mm. And I'm like, wow, where are we in regards to that? Because we need to actually create solutions for our market. Mm-hmm. Who's going to do it? How are we going to do it? We have unique conditions here that yes. make it very challenging. We've already described mm-hmm. that bifurcation of experience yeah. and innovation know-how, mm. right? And it's about how you bring it together. So, right. I, I mean... At the end of the day, I just feel like there's so much opportunity, there's so much potential. Our human capital just always stuns me, right? So one of the things is, when I was in the Bay Area, like Mm -hmm. having been away for so long, Mm -hmm. I mean, Africa is always perceived as this kind of just problem place Mm -hmm. at a distance, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's all the news that's coming. Yeah, yeah. Right? Sadly. Right? Yeah, so you have to also do some work with the media. Mm -hmm. That's why we have this podcast. (laughs) what we're doing right, right yeah. so um so i always used to feel so like feeling like screaming i'm at mm. the office and you know i'm like i know so many amazing talented people in africa i went to school mm. with them this, mm. and sometimes you're almost you start to doubt it even you're yeah, like yeah. i know it's there but let me just go <laughs> from mm. and then i come back here and i'm like i'm sitting across from you for goodness sakes i mean jesus and Christ. there are lots of us huh? right there, there, there are very many of us so if I can just add on to your point, the thing is, we have the right skills. The banks that have been successful. So let me just a little bit of yeah, history yeah, of yeah. the banking Talk sector so it. that um, it can make it really relevant. So up to the early um, 2000s in this country, the leading banks that provided all the financing and financial solutions were largely multinational banks. Mm, right? The Barclays and... Yeah, yeah. Oh, you don't want to mention I, I don't want to mention names because you, you know, <laughs> I we, will we mention names. Mention. <laughs> you can mention the name. That's fine. But they're all multinational banks right. led by people who are um, led by organizations that were headquartered outside of mm. Africa. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then the so, closer they came to Africa or South Africa, which yeah, they still so do. South Africa, but not so much actually. South Africa is only coming in right now. So a lot of these banks were English, you know, yeah. English based, um, mm-hmm. you know, Expatric Singapore. Led, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of. And that worked because we were still figuring ourselves out. And there's nothing wrong with that. But very quickly, we became a people of our own. We wanted to access funding in our own way. And this, I'll say, equity understood it. They yeah. were quick. They were, first of all, you see, where did they start from? They started off as a building society. Okay. They're like, yeah, building society. I understand someone's building a house and how do they do it? So a chama, a chama on buildings. that just kept... And then also another thing. We are, we are a bunch of, you know, we're a communal um, investment uh, country. Right, right, right. We all come together. We're all in a chama. I mean, chamas are the people in chamas, which are all these investment groups. 
But they understood it. They were like, you, I don't need to give you a full mortgage for you to build your house. I just need to give you understanding your cash flow. This is how you do it. We've got the likes of um, the Kenyan Women um, Finance Trust also. They figure women actually are good people, a good bunch of you know group that we can work with in yeah. terms of building higher trust yeah, relationships. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they don't um, take crazy risks. No, so they're not talking about proving their ego on exactly. crazy. Exactly. So we moved away from a very American English model where I will pay you at the end of each month. Some of these facilities have were, were being given on a daily basis. So from your collections on the day, mm-hmm. I will lend you. You will turn over. You will pay. Okay. Right? okay. So that's, that's so maybe, different cadence of how. So, so yeah. So. We're still talking about money and we're still talking about finance, but how I facilitate you accessing that finance in a way that works for you yeah. is now where the competitive so edge... you like Africanize that. the whole game. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and that's, that's why awesome. today as we speak, mm-hmm. we don't have, among the top three banks in this country, and I speak just for Kenya, the top three banks are indigenous Kenyan I didn't. I, I never thought about it like that. Right? That's, that's changed in 20 years? It's changed. It's changed. I promise you, enter the industry. They were leading, it was all the multinational banks. And now where are we? We are now trying to catch up with the local banks. And it speaks to that. When you understand how I purchase, when you understand how my money flows, and you're not fitting me into a box. Exactly. Yeah? You're like giving... You, person, fit into my world. No. The customer said, we don't want that. Come on. Yeah? And how many people actually banked at the time? The oh, unbanked right. were massive. The unbanked were, uh, were, were very big. In fact, what has helped us with financial inclusion, which is one of the big um, agenda items for the banks, was the introduction of M-Pesa or mobile uh, money. So mobile money, I think we are, the census is about to be done, but you know, based on what I see, we're about 48 million people. We have at least over 35 million lines which have access to some form of banking right. in right. Right? right? So that's more than what we had done. Um, in the early 2000s, I don't think the banking penetration was greater than even, you know, six or seven or 10 million. Mm. Let's cap it at mm. 10 million. Let's just mm. round it up to 10 million. Wow. Yeah? Okay. So just look at that multiply effect by just making it convenient and meeting people Accessible. at their point of need. Yeah. 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 So you look at different products. You look at, okay, so Mpesa, yes, we all know about Mpesa, but Fuliza which is an overdraft. Mm-hmm. It is an overdraft. Mm-hmm. I borrow money today, we, play, we pay it tomorrow. I know it just keeps on revolving. We're doing it now on the phone. And I'm doing it based on data, assessing how you operate. Yeah. And then yeah, I'm giving it to you based on transactions yeah. and stuff like that. That's it. You know, I mean, like, so history doesn't end at three of the, you know, indigenous banks being the players. Mm-hmm. Let's play this out 10 years. It should be just maybe purely digital banking that was born now. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Like, mm. this should continue to get better. I think it's going to get better. I mean, if, if I look at the bank of the future, I remember we talked about trust and we've talked about the platforms, mm-hmm. AI, blockchain, um, and, all blockchain yeah. and all of that. I see banks creating the base. I see banks becoming a platform. Yeah? We will always be relevant. But we will be the platform that everyone else plugs into. I'll, pu- I'll put it this way. I think I'm not the banking as a concept or a trust thing. I guess what I want to decouple mm-hmm. and, and start to question is, will it, is it the incumbents who will create that or is it new? Um, I think it's going to have to be some fresh thinking. Okay. Right? Then we are in, in agreement. So I think it's going to be some fresh thinking. Yeah. Um, and that fresh thinking could be done internally in the banks. So what we're starting to see is we're seeing a lot of movement across industries. I, I, so, want, I want it to be outside, part of it, significant part of it, because, again, it's concentration of power and wealth mm-hmm. in the same hands. No, we need the young people to be the ones to build the next set of banks. I agree with you. Because now you can, some, these people have had a shot, like, let's create a new, because, mm-hmm. you know, I, I fundamentally believe that if you, if you concentrate, the world, the country won't change. I agree with you. I agree with you. But... The only part that I'm, I'm going to caution mm. is that this change is not going to happen. It's overnight. not going to happen overnight. So I... it's going to be a very gradual process. Yeah. So what we're going to start to see, and what, which I am starting to see, right, being in the banking world, we're getting younger and younger board members. Board members are responsible for driving the strategy and are accountable for the operations of the bank. 
So we're starting to see younger, you know, fresh minds coming in who have had experiences from other different sectors, which was never the case. Which is never the case. We had more experienced, more um, you just know, say older. older. <laughs> yeah. Call us fit as fit. So <laughs> white hairs that, on the board. Yeah. That's what it was about. But now we're seeing that starting to change because unfortunately the older you are it's very difficult to connect with what's going yeah. on today yeah. um, we talk about Kenya being a very youthful population mm. right so we have at least 70 percent of our population in Kenya being under the age of 30 70 percent right so that means I, I don't we know how old you are so we, we are in the minority <laughs> right, here. Right. so being the minority that means I'm going to think in a very marginalized way mm. whereas the majority is thinking very different. Very different yeah, yeah. So I need to be able to connect with that. And mm. I think all the banking institutions have recognized that. But it's how they go around so taking the, advantage of that opportunity right. that then starts to be the next thing. So that's kind of the classic conundrum, right? Mm -hmm. um, innovation, by definition, never happens from the center. <laughs> it's certainly not going to happen from the minority, right? Sorry? It's not said, certainly that innovation is not going to happen from the majority. No, it's not. This 30% that I'm referring to. And even 30% because the 30% lives in an institution that has a different incentive Absolutely. structure that's right. already built on an old model. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So people can say, oh, innovation, but the problem with innovation from an institution that already exists mm -hmm. is you're threatening people's jobs. You know what I'm saying? And these people can see, yo, you know what I'm saying? This blockchain thing is going to be... That's always a problem. That's always a problem, sir. So, yes. so that is why, I'll put it to you this way, you can have young board members, this other stuff, but the organization as established will put those brakes on you hard. People will undercut things because they're trying to survive in these streets. Well, I think there is a process in terms of how you can manage that. that but you see... It's not easy. I mean, it's not easy. <laughs> And resistance is part of any change, and that is expected. So I'm not saying that it's going to be a smooth sail and, you know, we expect, the banks are expecting and are going through a lot of resistance in terms of how they want to do things. I think the way the banks should pe think about this, right, to the extent a bank can think, because meaning it's an individual person, right? Yeah. Because it has multi, kind of, it's got different mm -hmm. products, departments, yeah. sometimes mm -hmm. there are conflict. Mm -hmm. So it's not a one entity that no, is... No, no. Singular yeah. in terms of it's how he thinks about the world, right? Yeah. Oh, honestly, I am. This is what I'm betting on. This is what I'm believing in. It's mm -hmm. like some banks will be able to evolve mm -hmm. for them to actually maybe even participate in the e economy of the future. Mm -hmm. Some will have to turn themselves inside out. Yeah. Very difficult to do. I, I, I'm just, I don't have a crystal ball, but yeah. I'm just saying it's going to be very different. It's going to be absolutely different. And so the people who the bankers who are going to survive are the ones who are very agile. So let's talk about the characteristics. So I think they'll be similar to the characteristics of an entrepreneur. The bankers of the future are going to be very agile. Bank and entrepreneur don't... don't mm. It's an, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's an it's oxymoron. A, it's an oxymoron, <laughs> but I'll explain to you why. Bankers you. don't take risk. Let me explain what I mean by risk. Okay, let's go. Skin in the game. And I'm actually reading this amazing book mm -hmm. by uh, Nassim Taleb, mm -hmm. who wrote A Black Swan. Oh, yes, I've read The Black Swan. Okay. Good book, yeah. So, Skin in the Game is, he's got this Conchato four series books yeah. and so on and so forth. So, Skin in the Game defines how this concept of having skin in the game real, not through our spreadsheet, <laughs> right. but real skin in the game where if something goes wrong, your reputation, you will actually suffer harm. Like, this downside for you personally yeah. changes completely the types of decisions, clarity, thinking. Of what people make. Yeah. So when you abstract, the problem with the modern world that we live in right now abstracts skin in the game and puts people in decision-making posture mm -hmm. where they don't have skin in the game. And therefore, it doesn't work very well because mm -hmm. skin in the game will make you fast, will make you fair. It will just change how you... Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So because of that fact, because of that reality... Mm -hmm. You don't see banks. Yeah, I, I just don't see it. Banks are not entrepreneurs. They would have to... Here's how, here's how the West have handled it, right? Okay. Just as an example. Mm -hmm. Established institution, Walmart. Mm -hmm. They put Walmart labs in Silicon Valley. Mm. Far from... The core business. The core business. Right? Because they knew 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you people will, right? Mm. We know our friends. <clears throat> um, we also have a situation that's happened. I don't know if you're familiar with, but you know, Safcom had yeah. the alpha thing happening. Yeah. And everybody knows, I'll just put it out there, it's imploded, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because Nairobi is not too far from... <laughs> Why Akiwa is not too far from killing money. Yeah, I don't know. Yes, where we're sitting is not too far. It'll just take us about 10 minutes and we're there. Right. So the influence is just like, I don't know, like mm. the story that happened there. But net of it is innovation, I guarantee you, right? Transformative is very, will look very threatening. You will not even want to, I'm betting on it coming from outside. And that is how we build our economy. And That's I, how we build our future. And I agree with you 100%. The turn in the banking sector happened when you started getting pressure pressure from outside. From outside, it never came internal. Um, I'll give another example of banks responding to to pressure: the interest rate cap, right? You know, there's legislation mm-hmm. where we are mm-hmm. all governed by one um, one interest rate, and we have the same margins, mm-hmm. right? That was because customers were like tired, dude. Like, <laughs> I'm working for for you. <laughs> This is it, man. And I don't get anything, you guys. It, it, you know, being a banker, I'm like, it's not completely true. But this is how they felt. And they had to make something punitive for us to change how we think and how we do business. So, so that's very interesting. So um, there is a huge social, cycle, social dynamic in this process. If I don't feel like I'm being treated well, it doesn't matter what the issues are. Yeah, I'm just going to make this one. And I'm going to yeah. walk. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to look for another solution. So what I meant that the bankers of the future, they have to be... Responsive. They have to be very responsive to what the customers want. Right? Then that means they have to change how they do some of the things that they do. Yeah. Hard decisions will have to be made. That's right. In taking full recognition that there are certain governance and regulatory issues that they have to adhere to. Right. But within that, there has to be a lot of flexibility in terms of delivering that message and giving customers the services that they want. Right, right, right. right. So we really, as bankers, have to become agile. Right. Completely agile. Interesting. It's and just... we need to walk in our customers' shoes. Right? What do you do? Okay. I, Another... don't think, I don't think we always do. I don't think we always do. Mm-hmm. Because we get caught up in a lot of stuff that that's going on for us, mm. following regulations, trying to make sure we're mm. profitable. Running the business. Sure. Running a business, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and when, when you get caught up in that, you actually miss out on what's really happening in, in the, the real world space, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. So what do you, so the other existential threat is this Libra thing, right? Facebook mm. and all these conglomerates that are going to take over the financial world, essentially. That's what they say. I'm not completely convinced, I'll be honest, but yeah. Well, well, I, Talk about it. Like, I mean, I'm not a fan of, of that because I'm like, dude, I mean, this guy, I'm not a huge, I'm not a fan of, of dude, like Zuckerberg and his crew, to be honest with you, man. Do you anyway, trust him? Okay, so uh, let me start. Let me start uh, do I uh, trust who? Uh, Facebook. Uh, no. I okay. mean, at the end of the day, do I trust them? I don't use Facebook, number one, so I guess that's my, <laughs> that's my answer to that question. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess the question is who's them in this Libra context? Mm-hmm. I, I just feel like, holy cow, if you centralized financial transactions into one thing, mm-hmm. that is by definition, to me, that's marks of colonization, man. I'm sorry, man. Africa, we've never, we don't have, we, yeah, man, that's scary. Yeah. No, no, no. For me, it's very scary. Um, And what's more scary for me is understanding the premise of what banking is. Banking is a trust relationship. Mm. That's why you ask if I trust them. Okay, interesting. And remember, so I'm I'm going back to what is banking. Banking Mm. is a relationship of trust. I give you my money, you take care of my money, vice versa, right? That is that relationship. So when you start hearing the Libra stories um, and all these other stories coming up, do we trust them enough? That they're going to invest because you know uh, the, the, the yeah. only yeah so that's the premise I'm coming from. They would have to actually put trust as their leading value proposition and actually build on it. And they have to demonstrate it. They have to demonstrate. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like and the thing is, there are no regulations. This, this thing is open. Yeah, it's completely open. I think I don't want to do that. Okay, so I'm, you and I are parents, right? 
we're not just working for ourselves. Right. We're also taking, making sure that we leave something small mm. for our kids. Is that where I'm going to put my money hand on heart and say, yeah, this is this is good. Whatever it is, right? I'm not even sure. In the business, yeah, whatever. Yeah, but yeah. So mm. I don't trust it. I don't think um, that's the way it should go. Mm. I think um, we should share ideas and we should find a way to co-create something that's relevant. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily... So, so here's my, my problem with it. Okay. It's a centralization of power around 20 global... It, foreign entities, right? Mm, mm. That is not blockchain. It was supposed to be decentralized with people having equitable stake. Yeah, blockchain is decentral. Blockchain is gives me security. Theory, right? But that's what I'm saying. They're, 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 they're going to create this crypto world on top of this platform. But it's still centralization of power. Okay. That is where the problem is. Mm. The problem, Why people are excited about the internet was the internet was going to democratize it participation. Opened it up. Yeah, so I can contribute, you can contribute. Yeah. But the problem is, it was co-opted again by the central central centrality. Facebook became where the internet happened. And we saw what happened, mm. even with our own actions, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So it's always a guess, it's always a question of you know democratization for real, not mm -hmm. in just as a word. Mm -hmm. Access for everybody. That's yeah. always the tension, right? Yeah. And now we're seeing these guys are basically saying, you know what, we're gonna Facebookify the whole crypto game and invite a bunch of other players, the safaricoms of Europe, right? To not participate. <laughs> to not participate. And it's quite dangerous, right? Because think about the issues that arise from data privacy, right? It is just how much information is sitting out there on individuals, right? Right. And without their knowledge, that information is going to be used. At least when you sign off to the bank, you're like, you know, you know all my financial transactions. And they're regulated and, by yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of... Yeah, Local, a level-headed, and, 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 and you're governed at multiple levels. You're governed, you know, in your country, um, we've got regional banks, right, you right. know, we've got the, the, the world skin bank. in the game. Everyone. So everyone is making sure that the yeah. money, the processes, mm -hmm. who is going to do this? Especially, if you, for me, the fear mostly is of people around the world, but... Africa, right? We've always nobody cares about us. I mean, in the terms of they care about us in terms of kind of like okay, but in terms of having a voice and having kind of like agency, like where we can actually show us a unified front and be like, yo, you know, we're talking from one. You know, we've never been able to do that no. effectively. No, right? we haven't. We haven't. And that's been our Achilles heel in a lot of ways. And if we could fix that, we could fix many things. Right. We could but you know, I think it also starts at the individual though. Yeah, it, it needs, yes, it must start with me. Before I can even start talking about, it has to start with the individual and you have to start building it up. Because if the individual does it right, it then moves into the, p the person you work with, it then now morphs into your organization, it morphs into a society, exactly. it morphs into a nation, morphs into a continent. Well, you know, the interesting thing is we, we have this, like we talked about these investment chama groups and the, the people, people organize and gather and, and have it. But... It, I guess my question is, how does it become more systemic and bigger and scalable? Like, it's, it's as if we, we need, you see, you, you need a reason to pull together, right? You need something bigger than yourself. Absolutely. Right? To, to, to believe in, right? Yeah. That to make you sacrifice or toe the line in a sense, so to speak, right? Mm. We've mm. never had that. So we, and to me, I feel like that is... That's never been articulated. And I think the people who had those voices were done away with, right? Post-independence, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And we don't know, like, all that stuff. But I think people are getting tired, man. I think younger people are just, like, they're starting to organize in different ways and they're starting to have this pan-Africanist kind of thing. Um, and the internet allows people to communicate more effectively, mm -hmm. share ideas, yeah. get on the same page. Mm -hmm. For me, I, I just look at it and I'm like, look, if we're not going to do something, if we're not going to articulate who we are and when... when if we're going to have a unified front, we don't have a chance of, of survival in a very real sense. Individuals will yeah, individuals be okay, will together, yeah. but uh, as countries, as a people, right? Mm -hmm. I still feel we're super vulnerable. No, we've always been. Um, without a doubt, we've always been vulnerable. But um, the way I look at it is we are going to survive. We have survived, right? Survival is not the game. No, it's no, thriving. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah. <laughs> we're getting there. Uh -huh. We have survived. But what is it that needs to be the game changer? What is the step change that we need to, to make? And coming back to entrepreneurs, the millennials, that's where I think our hope lies. Huh? Because they're going to push back. They're going to say, 
We don't want any of that stuff that you guys subscribe to, the philosophies, the principles that you subscribe to. We want to build something new and something that works for us. us yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And that's and why us with a big at you, not yeah, just... Yeah, no, no, no. It means right now, I mean, right. the millennials, I, I'd like to imagine most of them do not know tribe. I'd like to imagine that they do not know or borders or boundaries because they live on the net, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. everything is online. You're engaging with different people from different parts of the world. When I grew up, we used to engage yes with people from different parts of the world, but it was on email. Mm -hmm. It was very. Mm -hmm. But now life is starting to to open up, and and the influences are coming from everywhere. So mm -hmm. something happening in Nigeria very easily happens totally. here. Totally. Something happens in you know Europe. Egypt, Europe. We're we're all. It's all happening at the same time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I think that would be our saving grace. But when you come back to Africa. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you look at an African solution, the African solution has to take into consideration our local content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And that's why I'm confident that the millennials are starting to do that. When you travel around, I mean, you, you run, you know, you're working with the younger people, working with people fresh out of uni, you're setting them up to become AI specialists. They are the ones who are going to create. If we give them the right environment, mm -hmm. they will create the next Africa. Mm -hmm. um, I, I completely, I completely, so. you know, that's what, that's what I'm, that's what makes me get out of bed every day with excitement because I'm like, you know what? We have some, we've got to do something. Yeah. And we got to, the, 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 the demand is there, the, the energy it is, is there. there. It yeah. just needs to be channeled, channeled and pipelined properly. The problem is, you know, um, Desire or in, uh, uh, an interest in seeing things get better just doesn't make it so. Right? No, right? it has to be some action. Right? There has to be some action. There has to be skin in the game. Mm -hmm. right? And, you know, we do a lot of talking though. We talk lots. That's the problem. Africans love talking, which is fun and awesome. That's our culture. We're <laughs> storytellers. We love talking. But the, the, the thing is, we need to evolve from a talking to a doing. And um, it's, what, I mean by, what I mean by that is just like, really being about it, mm. being about that change. Yeah. And so, I mean, and, and I come across people who are doing amazing stuff, and that's why we have a podcast, so we can actually start to say, this is and what needs to them. happen. These are examples of amazing people, and how they're thinking yeah. outside the box, and how they're putting skin in the game, mm. and how they're, you know what I mean? I and it's not you. about titles anymore. Yeah. You know, these titles are going to kill us. Because once, some, once you give somebody a title, and I'm talking about from a professional standpoint, they, they develop an identity around that title, Mm. the whole thing is going to be about defending that position forever. Absolutely, right? absolutely. So you need to be flexible. And when you need to be flexible and for us to start moving away from identity, then we need to start working with principles. Totally. Yeah. Um, and some of the principles that I'd like to borrow from the banking sector that be, will be most relevant for millennials or people who are starting up businesses today, the very first one is around integrity. <sighs> Right. No, talk about integrity, man. <laughs> so we can do anything, can say all this, but integrity is the most, it's the fundamental. fundamental. It's the first principle. If I tell you I am going to pay you tomorrow, I need to pay you tomorrow. What do you even pay? I... Show up on time. Yes, yes. Can so, we just start with something cheap? <laughs> say 11 o'clock, it's 11 o'clock. Right? That's it. So integrity, and this is what kills a lot of these businesses. When they come to us for funding, for all these great big ideas, and then nothing stacks up. Do you think we're going to want to no. work with them again? Why? Right? Exactly. It's so crazy. I don't understand. Like, you see, success is a compound thing. Long-term success. Real right. success. Not, I, not Ujanja, like I made a little bit of money here and there. And there. That's poverty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> if you want to create real wealth success, and success is not just financial. It is relational. Yes. It is your reputation. Yes. It is all these things. Yes. Why do we feel... So for me, our core values as an organization, Impact mm -hmm. Africa Network is performance, mm -hmm. integrity, and by the way, high performance, high integrity, and high collaboration. I'm not just saying performance, I'm saying a high, high level. High, You know what I mean? Yeah. So well, that comes from a good foundation of high integrity. If I commit that I'm going to do something and I'm going to follow through, then I really do need to do that. Integrated. Because then the performance comes. Yeah. Yeah? And then there needs to be consistency because we also understand that you're going to fail sometimes. Mm -hmm. We don't expect everyone yeah, life to is not, Life is not a bed of roses. But right? how do you communicate and what do you learn from that failure that allows you to keep going, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And those are some of the things I think would be so, 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 so critical. Process and discipline, right? So whether you're millennial, older, discipline goes without saying. So it's the stuff you're talking about, which is um, 
do you come to work on time? When you commit that something's going to be done on time, do will you that be done? Exactly. Are you consistently going to keep blogging? Are you going to make sure this podcast keeps going, keeps going? Because that's how the consistency totally. then what, what starts to bring all that into play. Yeah. And as banks, that's what we'll be look at. When you're looking at an entrepreneur, that's exactly what we're looking at. Is this guy consistent? Will this guy weather the storms? Will he communicate when there's a problem? Right? Do his processes stack up? Mm-hmm. Is know? his story adding up? Yeah. Is one plus one equals two? Oh, we're seeing... Oh, you're seeing... You know, do yeah. his numbers make sense? <laughs> Is he able to uh, account for this stuff? Right, right. And if everyone could do that consistently, I promise you would never even have to look for security or collateral. Yeah. Why? Right, right. If you're a man of honor, a woman of honor, word, and you're following a process and you're consistent... Jeez, man. You know, this is this is the most. This is to me. This is kind of like the thing that I feel it's the biggest missed opportunity. Mm. Because you know, <laughs> it's not what we do today; it's what we will do tomorrow right. and the next day as partners, relationship, right? Yes. In yes. business, mm. it is not about the current. This just allows us to do the next thing. Yes, that's it. And there's this guy called Naval who's, you know. Silicon Valley in entrepreneur, investor okay. guy. And he has developed a brand around just these principles around um, what works in life. Mm-hmm. Um, and he talks about all success in life com- comes from compound interest. Interest meaning relational, mm-hmm. business partnerships. Yes. And, and uh, it's compound games. Yes. Right? Yeah. Meaning that we, do, we play today in business or whatever or in whatever, right? Mm-hmm. We, we follow through. We show each other that the, the trust increases, and it's what we will do going forward. Exactly. That, that's how we will create. Um, and, and so for, for me, I, I'm, I just feel like I'm so excited that you brought this up, the principles mm-hmm. thing, because okay. it is the most important thing mm-hmm. that we do not have. Yeah. If we have those principles and we follow through on the principles that we've just talked about, it makes the, it'll make the entrepreneur's life a lot Much easier. Much easier. Right? Jesus. And it, it doesn't remove the risk from the business models that are going to... It be reduces it, though. It, it reduces it, but doesn't, remo- doesn't um, eliminate them completely because the markets can shift. Yeah, yeah. You don't have any control. Yeah, yeah. But if you've got the disciplines in place, at least you can foresee that. You can manage that proactively right. as opposed to a reactive, reactive right. situation. And I just feel like when you live in a space where you're living on principles... You're resilient. Absolutely. Right? You can yeah. you're you're creative. Yeah. Yes. You can collaborate. Right. You can weather storms so much better. Exactly. Than if you're kind of not that, right? Exactly. You're super you're vulnerable. The inside, yeah, oh, then you have a you're just you know, you're just out there on the savannah. Right. The the headlights waiting to be to be eat up. Yeah. But listen, we kind of hit an hour, I think. Yes, we have. We and have. we didn't but even it's been t- really good. And, and, I'm looking at the questions we wanted to talk about. Like, we haven't even touched And that's why the principles are so important. At least we talked about the, the key things. We right. talked about the fact that you know banking is, an, is, is a service of trust. Mm-hmm. We talked about the fact that all the new technologies coming in just enhance that from my perspective. And we've talked about the principles that we must follow mm-hmm. in order for us to access the banking and financing solutions that we're looking for. We've talked about it a bit philosophically, but I think that helps to connect with it people. It does. I think, I think yeah. people will appreciate this. Um, yeah, and I can't thank you enough for taking the time to do welcome. this. You, you, you didn't have to do it, right? You could continue your, your life, mm. but you're taking the time to actually, you know, uh, put yourself out there like that. And yeah. most people in our society are very still risk averse. You know, like, hey, you know. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to touch yeah, that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to touch yeah. that. I've got my secure situation over here I'm not going to put my brand out there like that so you doing that is is again it's it's demonstration of people who are willing to for one of a better terms put skin in the game and actually contribute to the change absolutely right? I do want to I don't want to become obsolete right so I don't think and you I want to con- I want to contribute in a meaningful way yeah leveraging on all the experience that I have mm-hmm. I'd love to give it why would I accumulate all this experience and keep it to myself? It atrophies. Fail. It's useless. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, my dream is be, would be for you to become a CEO of one of the companies we're building. That would be I'm happy so, to do so exciting. So I'm happy to connect. Right. We got a challenge on our hands to actually build yes. something worthy of you actually coming to lead. So. No, I'm sure. I'm sure. Just looking at what you guys have set up here in, in the um, Impact Africa Network, 
it's definitely something I'm going to keep my eyes on and like to be part of. Yeah, yeah. And we'll be in touch. Keep right. you posted. Okay. Thank you so Thank much, Esther, for coming. Okay. And um, yeah, maybe we'll do part two another day. Yeah.